Hi, it's Katrina. My friend David is going to be helping me out with the voiceover today, so everyone give him a warm welcome. Number 10. Pope Urban II Pope Urban II is most famous for ordering the very first crusade and plunging the Middle Ages into years of conflict and bloodshed. On November 27, 1095, the Pope made what is believed to be the most influential speech of the medieval age. He incited violence by calling all Christians in Europe to fight against the Muslims and reclaim the Holy Land. It was Pope Urban II who cried, God wills it. In other words, he claimed God wanted Europe to fight against the Muslims and retake Jerusalem at any cost. The Holy Land encompasses the entirety of the Middle East. It's the birthplace of Christianity and Judaism centered in the city of Jerusalem. Since the 6th century, the Holy Land had been firmly controlled by Muslims. Then, in the 11th century, the Seljuk Turks abruptly decided Christians would no longer be allowed inside Jerusalem. Christians were banished, and the Turks also made threats against the Byzantine Empire, saying they would take the city of Constantinople. Emperor Alexius I appealed to Pope Urban II for help, and thus began the Crusades. The Pope used his power to unite Europe under a Christian banner. About 100,000 soldiers took up the call, and this was only the first of seven major military campaigns that would take place over the next 200 years. Number 9. Pope Julius III Pope Julius III came into power after the death of Paul III. He ruled the Papal States from February of 1550 up until his death five years later in 1555. As you've learned by now, popes had extremely short lifespans, just like Roman emperors. As Pope, Julius III did almost nothing he was supposed to do. Instead, he dedicated himself to a life of personal pleasure and self-fulfillment. His papacy was filled with scandal, but the worst involved his adopted nephew. Innocenzo Ciocchi del Monte was a beggar discovered on the street of Parma. He was hired by the Pope's family to be a lowly hall boy or a domestic worker. The boy was around 14 years old, and he was immediately given the title Cardinal Nephew when Julius became the Pope. However, it's likely he wasn't promoted based on his merits. Rumors began to circle that the Pope was having an extremely inappropriate relationship with the young boy. He was treated like the Pope's pet, and this reflected very poorly on the church. We still don't know what the exact nature of their relationship was, but it was bad enough that after Pope Julius died, the boy was banished. Number 8. Pope Nicholas V when Portugal expanded into Western Africa in the 15th century, merchants began to understand the economic advantage of a massive slave trafficking enterprise. It all began in 1441 with ship captain Antam Gonçalves. He traveled to West Africa and there he acquired a load of seal skin and oil, but he wasn't satisfied with his profit margins. Before he sailed away, he led a raiding party into Cap Blanc and kidnapped a pair of local indigenous people. He brought these captives back to Portugal to show the royal family just how profitable a slave trade could be. This is generally seen as the beginning of a very dark time in human history. But this was far from the first time there had been mass slavery. The Romans were some of the worst offenders, and for this reason there were strict laws in place. In the 15th century, there were clear guidelines in the way that people of specific religions were to be treated. But their laws really only applied to Christians, Jews, and Muslims. As for the people of Africa, they were seen as barbarians. This is where Pope Nicholas V comes into play. Between 1452 and 1455, Pope Nicholas released a series of official decrees, giving Portugal the holy right to enslave African human beings. Church leaders argued that slavery was a great way to Christianize the people of Africa, and the Pope agreed 100%. Pope Nicholas V was largely responsible for the normalization of slavery in Europe, essentially blessing the whole operation by saying it was what God wanted. Number 7. Pope Boniface VIII Pope Boniface VIII is known by some as the Devil Pope for his supposed worship of Satan. He was elected to become Pope in 1294 because he was known to be a very religious man and had a reputation for integrity. When Pope Boniface was elected, he was living as a hermit in a mountain cave. The College of Cardinals had to travel thousands of feet up the mountains just to tell him he was going to be Pope. The details surrounding his election are so dramatic they could be made into a mini-series. The previous pope, Celestine V, 
was wildly unpopular but still had a lot of powerful friends in powerful places. He renounced the papacy because the people hated him so much, but he still had influence. Pope Boniface knew this, so he imprisoned him as his first act and kept him locked in a castle until he died. Pope Boniface VIII seemed to do well in the beginning. He formalized the Jubilees and founded the University of Rome La Sapienza, but then his hunger for power grew. He wound up becoming a great enemy of King Philip IV of France and exiled him from the church in 1303. King Philip was notoriously cruel and allegedly spread rumors that Pope Boniface was a devil worshipper. After the Pope died shortly after exiling Philip under mysterious circumstances, the King staged a trial in which the dead Pope was charged with heresy. Number 6. Pope Alexander VI Pope Alexander VI was the most corrupt and sinful priest that ever sat on the Vatican's great seat of power. He is by far history's dirtiest pope, and you'll be shocked to find out why. Pope Alexander VI was born Rodrigo Borgia in 1431. The Borgia family was one of the wealthiest and noblest households in all of Spain. They had massive amounts of money and power, and their influence was prominent across much of Europe. It was Rodrigo's uncle, Alfonso de Borgia, who became Pope Calixtus III in 1455. The papacy during the Middle Ages was a lot more concerned with power and influence than about closeness to God, although some might say that has never changed. Like many popes, Calixtus III appointed his own relatives and friends to the best positions in the church. This was what ultimately led Rodrigo to being sworn in as the Pope in 1492. However, he also had to bribe quite a few cardinals to beat his other family members to the papacy. Once he was named Pope, Alexander's reign of terror began. One of his first sins was the practice of simony, meaning he sold church offices to the highest bidders. Whoever had the most money could have the best position in the church. He also had expensive parties, the likes of which the Vatican had never seen before. One of the most famous of these celebrations occurred on October 30th, 1501. The Pope brought an estimated 50 prostitutes into the Vatican and had an all-night party with his own young son in attendance. These kinds of misdeeds continued throughout his entire time as Pope. Alexander VI died in 1503 from a mysterious disease. His body bloated, he became discolored, and then he passed away. Some historians believe he was bitten by a mosquito and caught malaria, while others think he was assassinated for being such a sinful pope. He was succeeded by Julius II, who refused to even live in the same rooms as Alexander, because he was known for being so disgusting. Do you think the papacy is still as corrupt today as it was hundreds of years ago? Let us know what you think in the comments, and while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. Number 5. Pope Damasus I Pope Damasus I was one of the first popes in history, ruling the church in the Western Roman Empire, likely from between 304 to 384 AD. However, historians aren't completely sure on all the dates. They also don't know if the pope was born in Spain or Portugal, but they seem to agree that he was most likely raised in the Roman Empire. Damasus served as pope during some of the first years that Christianity was gaining power. At this time, pagans were still running wild, and the Roman Empire had yet to collapse in on itself. In fact, it was during Damasus's rule that Christianity became the official religion of Rome. Throughout his papacy, Damasus was accused of murder and adultery. Many people who lived during his rule also believed him to be immoral. He was said to participate in lavish parties, he was friends with powerful leaders of other major religions, and he personally knew all of the most important pagan cult high priests. Damasus was called the Lady's Ear Tickler by his critics, which is unsettling to say the least. And in the year 378 AD, he was accused of cheating on his wife, but the claim was put to rest by Emperor Gratian. Shortly after he was found innocent of adultery, everyone who accused him of the sin was cast out of the church and banished. Number 4. Pope Innocent III Pope Innocent III will forever be remembered as the man who started the Albigensian Crusade. In the 13th century, there was a movement spreading across Europe that not too many people know about. It was called Catharism, and it was a kind of dualist religion that challenged the teachings of the Catholic Church. The movement began to blossom, with the followers of Catharism referring to themselves as good Christians. 
They were trying to take all the best parts of Christianity and dismiss the corruption, violence, and brutality that was the Catholic Church. This was not ideal for Pope Innocent III, who liked the Church just the way it was, so he began a crusade against them. On July 22, 1209, the Pope's army committed a massacre at the city of Béziers. The army killed about 20,000 people with their swords, making it one of the greatest one-sided slaughters in history. Commanders in the army were ordered to kill everyone, and they were told that God would sort out the Christians. The soldiers knew they were murdering people of their own faith, but they chose not to care, and it was all orchestrated by the Pope, who considered what happened a divine vengeance. On the day of the crusade, 7,000 people alone were trapped in the church of St. Mary Magdalene, and they were shown no mercy. Men, women, and children all were slain. By the time the crusaders were done, nobody in the town was left alive. Number 3. Pope John XII Pope John XII became the ruler of the Papal States on December 16, 955 AD. He held the position until his untimely death in 964 AD. His name was Octavian before becoming Pope John, and he had direct ties to a powerful Roman family that controlled the politics and the church for at least half a century. Unfortunately for him, he became a pope a little too early. Pope John XII was only a teenager when he took the greatest seat of power available in Rome. One of his first moves as pope was to attack the Lombard people of Italy, who had taken several chunks of the Papal States. He wanted to reclaim land, but it didn't work out in his favor. As a teenager, John found that he was not able to control the Roman nobility, something his predecessor had done so easily. Fearing for his life, Pope John XII reached out to King Otto I of Germany. Together, they made a pact. King Otto would defend the Pope with everything he had, and in return, the Pope would make Otto the Holy Roman Emperor. After being crowned, Otto became the most powerful man in Italy. Pope John soon realized he'd made a mistake. Emperor Otto was far more powerful than the young Pope could ever hope to be. John was also a notorious scumbag, and it was apparent to the people that he cared very little about the church. He was seen as vain, and he was always sleeping with people's wives. There was going to be a conflict between the emperor and the pope, but then John died abruptly on May 14, 964 AD. According to the legends, he was caught in bed with a man's wife and was strangled to death. Number 2. Pope Clement VII Pope Clement VII began his life as a member of the Medici family, and was originally named Giulio de Giuliano de Medici. His family was once one of the most politically influential households in all of Italy. They were extremely wealthy, and they were so important that their children were welcome to become Pope, even if they had no legitimate qualifications. To make things worse, Pope Clement was an illegitimate child, and he was raised by his uncle, Lorenzo the Magnificent. He went on to become the Pope in 1523 and ruled the Vatican for 11 years. Clement wasn't necessarily an evil Pope, he just made a lot of really poor decisions. He didn't understand the Lutheran movement that was happening, nor did he know how to make proper alliances. Emperor Charles V had endorsed his candidacy for Pope, and yet Clement allied himself with the Emperor's enemy, Francis I of France. He basically spat in the face of the Emperor, which later resulted in his imprisonment inside the castle of Saint Angelo. The Pope's misguided attempt to be friends with France resulted in Rome being pillaged by the Emperor. Then, when the Emperor refused to pay the mercenaries, they ravaged Rome in May of 1527. The only thing Clement VII did during his rule that didn't end in a bunch of people getting killed was when he commissioned Michelangelo to paint the Last Judgment in the Sistine Chapel. Number 1. Pope Liberius Pope Liberius I became the Pope on May 17, 352 AD. Unfortunately for him, he was immediately thrown into a controversy and soon wound up in jail. When he became Pope, there was an ongoing conflict between a priest in Alexandria named Arius, who had come up with a variation of the doctrine of the Trinity. This priest claimed that Jesus Christ was the Son of God, and therefore separate from God himself. This was against the idea the Catholic Church had always pushed, that the Trinity, meaning Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, are all one with no separation. The Church's stance was solid, but the same couldn't be said for Emperor Constantius II, who was a follower of Arius. 
When Pope Liberius refused to change the official stance of the church, the emperor had him kidnapped and imprisoned for two years. He was exiled to the land of Thrace in northern Greece, and while he was imprisoned, the emperor allegedly forged letters in his handwriting and cast out the pesky Egyptian bishop from the church. However, there is some speculation regarding the true events that took place during this time. This was almost 2,000 years ago, and so it's difficult to say who was right and who was wrong. Supposedly, Liberius was never officially made a saint, which is extremely odd. Many people believe this is because Liberius was guilty of heresy, and that he wrote the letters to cast out the Egyptian bishop, not Emperor Constantius. It was all part of his plan to save his job and return to being Pope instead of a prisoner. Who do you think was the worst Pope of all time? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe! Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time!